Uh, next up, um, we have Asim. So Asim is a PhD student in UCD and he's working with Dr. Brendan Rooney and his research interests involve storytelling and social cognition and experimental, exper experiential design, particularly giving people a sense of awe. And Asim is going to be telling us about the positive benefits and viewer for good. Hi Asim, how are you? Hey, good, thanks, how are you? Good, are you ready to go? Yeah, thanks for your introduction. I think you, I mean, that was perfect. Uh, I'll share my screen here. Present, share screen. Um, yes. Okay. Um, thanks. Perfect. So yeah, um, you did a perfect introduction here. So I'm going to talk to you about, um, well, VR for good and how um, VR can be used for positive benefits with one example I'm working on. So I guess I'll speed run this slide. So I have this mixed background between um, psychology, cognitive science and um, graphics design, specifically for um, VR and AR. And yeah, I'm doing this PhD with Dr. Brendan Rooney with uh, on um, VR for Good. And yeah, my research interests are mostly about uh, experiential design in different ways. So art installations, mixology, tour guiding, video games, VR, and in the context of storytelling, also VR as a medium, as opposed to a research tool, which is often how it's used in, well, in research. And evidence-driven design that I think is very important to have, um, well, the contribution of science to inform the design of different experiences. Uh, I have, on, on the side of my PhD, I have two ongoing projects, which are um, inside the room. That's a two-person intimate VR experience that we want to use to prompt interpersonal awe and self-disclosure. But I'm, I'm working on that with um, two former classmates and colleagues who are also doing their PhDs um, about VR. And I'm doing this collaboration between my lab and the Kremlin Sweden Hospital in Dublin um, to develop a transformative VR experience that will help children alleviate their anxiety and shift their uh, personal narrative regarding how they experience the hospital journey. And yeah, that's, when, that's what I'm going to talk to you about. So uh, to go very briefly, have a very quick state of the art in about the VR in pediatric hospitals. Uh, it's used in many different ways. So in medical education, uh, safety and efficacy review in psychology, mental wellness and preoperative anxiety, and there's also a lot in pain reduction. But um, it's not looked. I mean, VR in this context is not really looked at as an experiential medium, but mostly as something to distract or to simulate. And yeah, there's a lot of research on training and pain reduction, but I feel like the, this research is very specific to the ecosystem where, where it happens. So in the hospital where it's taking place and also is very sensitive to the contents that's been shown as stimuli for the experience and VR is evolving very quickly. And depending on the content that you show, you can elicit and prompt different feelings and experiences. So um, yeah, I'm not, I mean, there's no point going too far into that because it, it changes a lot. So I am working with this team. So, uh, it's a team of, I mean, that's the team of psychologists uh, based in the hospital. So I'm working more closely with Anne-Marie Casey and Sarah Carroll with the support of Vincent McDarby and Andres Kelecheni. And I'm super, um, supervised by yeah, Brandon Rooney um, at UCD. So just to give you an, an overview of the children experience at the hospital, uh, I took a few screenshots from a video that's very well made that's well available on YouTube. So first, um, children are accompanied by their parents and they see 
the play specialists before the intervention. So the play specialists are here to um, present them with how the intervention is going to go using storybooks. Uh, the children can also well play different games and just spend the time in this space. The, if they have questions that need answers, that's a good first step. And the goal is really to help them make sense of the intervention and how uh, everything is going to go for them. Then they meet with the doctor who's going to ask uh, the different health related questions and do the basic checks. Then they will meet with the nurses who will um, take the blood pressure, the temperature and the heart rate. After that, they go into the surgery theater and they have another check in with other nurses. Then they get the cannulas inserted uh, for the anesthetic, which will be the next step. And then um, at the end of the intervention, they have some time to well, get some food, recover. And that's well, mostly what they, they go through. So with this experience, um, there are a few challenges depending on the children, their past experiences, how much time they have spent at the hospital, if they have had a um, single bad experience that changes a lot of how they appraise the subsequent ones. So they are like fear of needles. Uh, yeah, too many interventions that can take a toll on the child. Um, some don't like swallowing pills that might be too big, that they just have had too much of them. Uh, the CPAP, they are the masks that um, help them breathe. So I'm based in cardiology, so I don't know too much about the other challenges that they might face, but that's just, well, stuff I heard from other psychologists. Uh, some are scared of the MRI, that's, I mean, also common with um, adults. And this, the sedation, so the goal with VR would be to uh, provide a more ethical alternative to sedation. And yeah, in turn, if, I mean, these challenges prompt this kind of anxiety in children about the hospital in general, the parents can be trained and feel kind of helpless and hopeless about the situation because if they have to come many many times and they see that well that children don't want to go through the intervention and have to come again and just slows down also the the flow of the hospital and makes the waiting time for more children longer and so that's where um vr comes to play so um i'm i mean yeah i'll mention i'll mention some of what Camille was saying a bit earlier, but yeah, uh, VR enables a high level of immersion. There's a, a huge range of ways to interact, especially with the latest headsets. So it goes from just the controllers to maybe eye tracking, voice commands, um, yeah, gesture recognition with the hand tracking as well. So there are many, many ways to um, interact with different VR environments. Uh, it's also a space to express creativity depending on what's enabled in the VR space. There's also yeah, this idea of scale and perspective that I think is crucial, especially when designing for children, because well, the, the height of the camera should be much lower and we should adopt their perspective and they should recognize the perspective that they normally have in this experience. Um, it also enables holistic simulations and replication of experiences in a, in a more complete way because of how um, sensory, that, yeah, that's, that's probably not English, but like how it immerses you and s stimulates all your senses, uh, not all of them, but like the main ones at once and really can, can create a, a full-on experience or a space. And what I think is also important is that it contextualizes and specializes information. So um, I don't know if you pay attention to that. And I was just thinking about that when I was making my slides, but there's um, there are paintings on the walls on the right hand side. And if you had, let's say, these characters in a VR space, they could be used um, 
as a kind of a proxy or vector to guide children to seek some information that's that is relevant for them to to help them make sense of their hospital journey so if I don't know some master would point out point at a a machine or a tool and ask the children what is that and maybe they would provide the answer that that would be a uh, some cool cool uh, cool stuff and so yeah the key processes that vr enables uh could be i mean can range from distraction that's mostly used in pain management uh, relaxation when children are anxious stimulation with uh, i guess it's mostly entertainment that's provided desensitization that would be very good for instance with the um, mri the anchoring is that idea of having something that exists across um across platforms kind of so if you interact with the character in vr and then you see a the painting of the same character in the at the hospital or if they're present in a booklet or uh, if you get a plushie of this character it's like something that you're familiar with and that can anchor you across the two spaces and i think it's it's a powerful tool especially for children and there's this idea of empowerment that i really like when it comes to vr experiences and the potential that they can have um in children i think it's not leveraged enough not in in this population at least so that's that's the the aim of the project so we want to um, help children alleviate the pre-intervention anxiety through empowerment by providing transformative experiences so my work um, with my phd focuses on R, so it's it's good if it's awe inspiring but it doesn't have to be um foster sense making I think that there's this link between, I have to do my homework and actually do the research, but there's probably a link between um, transformative experiences and oh, and how we can help change your perspective on something and how this perspective shift will help you make more sense or in a different way of a situation that will in turn reduce stress and anxiety because you have you feel more in control of what's happening because you know what's happening so yeah i'm really interested um, in that um there's also this idea of agency and decision making so i think it's also very crucial so children in hospital kind of don't have a choice in many situations they just have to go through what they have to go through and they don't really get to say no and so give them a choice through an experience is like sounds very small but it's actually very powerful like the idea of giving them the option to say yes or no or to pick between different characters that's something that's huge um also helping them reconnecting with body ownership through embodiment so yeah they get um these cannulas inserted uh, many many times for the anesthetics uh, they have all kinds of interventions on their bodies depending on well what they are in, at the hospital for but yeah it's i think it's important to for them to be able to reclaim back this body ownership and not having this alien kind of medical tools in them and not i mean feeling that they are alien and yeah, finally changing these mental representations of the hospital. So just just like if you hear the word hospital, it's it's tied to a specific representation that might not be positive. And VR has this potential, depending on the experience that you provide, to change how uh, this representation is and how hosp the hospital can be perceived. And that can in turn change the narrative identity. So um the way children see themselves and make sense of the experiences inside of the hospital so that's i mean yeah that's um maybe a lot to to be able to achieve on with one project but yeah that's the idea so it's very much work in progress and i'm going to go through the the, pro, the, the different steps that we've had done so so far so yeah currently what we want to do is to just i mean just yeah we want to replicate the surgery theater of in the cardiology department 
um, using a PBR workflow. That's the technical bit, but it's just physically based rendering. And that's just a way to render um, 3D elements in a way that looks very, very realistic. And this space would serve as kind of a sandbox to create these different experiences. So um, yeah, I mentioned having, let's say, Boo from Monster Inc. You could, I mean, children could see her or like play hide and seek, have to find her in different places of this surgery theater. Maybe she would hide behind some tool and they would have to name the tool for her to go to the next step. But maybe this, this idea of gamification, but there's also the idea of um, kind of providing them with something that they wouldn't expect and how, I mean, I think it would be awesome just to face a, a fictional character in the VR at, at your height. That would be something I think uh, that could be very powerful. So uh, yeah, about the design process that we are using. So yeah, I mentioned that I want to have an evidence-based process and that's mostly because I can't make an assumption of what children would like to see or hear or experience in this VR space because I don't have I don't have their creativity and I don't have the experience. I don't, have, I don't know about the concerns and anxiety. So the best way would just be to ask them. And so the goal would be yeah, to gather evidence to inform this design. So that would be either from a participant patient involvement approach or a qualitative analysis. Uh, the former is uh, more straightforward. The latter only requires ethics and is a more lengthy process. Uh, something that's very important is to not reinvent the wheel and connect the dots, as in, um, so CHI Children Health Island is very big and it's very likely that some stuff has been done by different people in different spaces. And the goal is to find these people and the work that they have done so as to not recreate something that already, that's already here. Uh, it's also crucial to have measurable outcomes both um, psychology based for me to make contribution to science and progress on my PhD, but also uh, have quantitative metrics that are relevant for the hospital and important for our stakeholders so that they can support the, the initiative and push the, the process further. And this iterative approach going back and forth between um, the children and uh, different versions of the design, I think is very important to have something that's solid and that really matches what they have in mind. So yeah, the way we've been doing that, we've been uh, lining up the ducks. So um, I've had many, many meetings and discussions to generate food for thoughts initially uh, with nurses, play specialists, surgeon, music therapists, many psychologists. Uh, I met with ethics, uh, research and innovation uh, that's ongoing. So there's actually a person who has a 3D model of the whole next hospital, which is great so that I don't have to do it myself. And it would be a great space to begin with and create this experience from that. And I will be meeting with the Youth Advisory Council. That's basically a group of um, children who have been at the hospital, I think, so they know what it's like. And I think it's crucial to get their ideas and hear from them what they would like to see, what they were stressed about, what they enjoyed, what they didn't enjoy, what they wished was different and so on. But then I also need to think about um, the measures. So the psychology one could take uh, many, many shapes and forms. So what would be the research question that I'm going to address? How would be the experimental design like? Uh, what could be the research methods? And what was the design? I mean, what was my decision and how can I explain it? Uh, the pros and cons of each method and also the best measure. Uh, that's yeah part of the next steps and what's very essential is to kind of be dazzled the stakeholders by having metrics that are relevant 
and that speak for themselves. So yeah, maybe the number of patients per day that's going to be reduced because children are not, children are not as uh, anxious as they used to be, so they don't have to welcome on another day and occupy this time. Uh, less chairs of sedation, a few appointments with psychologists, and so on. There's also the idea of um, checking with patients and parents and how they are satisfied. Maybe it could be a dedicated platform, maybe it's just a feedback sheet, maybe it's just yeah, different scales of ended questions. It can be done in so many ways. And it's about finding the right way to convey this information uh, in a way that's straightforward and also makes sense. But again, yeah, there's the problem of project deployments. So what we've been doing, uh, we're trying to do is to kind of create a culture uh, around VR at the hospital. So there has been the um, HSCP day, which is Health and Social Care Professionals Day. Uh, that was just a way to reach out to um, other staff, to parents and to children and have them try out the VR headsets and see what, I mean, what they thought of it and how they liked it. Uh, it's important also to have meetings, well, with different staff and connecting them, uh, circulating all the information that we can and the resources that we have about VR and how well, it can help on, on their practices. Uh, we also want to implement education sessions and drop-in clinics just to, well, explain the technology and how it should be used, what could be good experiences to show, what would fit for, like, for the boys, for the girls, for different age ranges. And also, well, uh, understand how the headset works. So I guess it's mostly about knowledge transfer and so people, if they want to use the headsets and VR, they should know how to select an app, how to use hand tracking and all of that. And yeah, that's basically yeah, training play specialists and champions or having champions that would be able to use um, the headsets efficiently. And yeah, don't, don't, without requiring the expertise of, well, VR experts. And yeah, what's also essential is future proofing. So making sure that this approach and this project will be long lasting in the future. So I've put together with um, two psychologists, a founding application for headsets, um, more equipment and a stipend to well pay the person who will be doing the job. And maybe also having a clinical student or a postdoc who will be focusing uh, more specifically on, on this. So I don't have much more to show because it's really work in progress. And yeah, that would be, um, I mean, this the, the, the basis of the project will be the replication of a hospital space. So it wouldn't be um, very stunning anyway. Um, yeah, I think that's it for me. Thank you. Well, I was saying, <laughs> blown away. <clears throat> totally blown away. Um, if you talk about VR for good, I can't even think of a better example, like uh, empowering children going to, who are ill in hospital. Um, that's absolutely amazing. It's brilliant work that you're doing. Um, Thanks. Have you, have, how are they getting on with it so far? Have, have, they, have you been in and tried it with them or...? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Have, 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 how, have, what's your experience with children using VR? Do they um, pick it up pretty quickly or? Yeah, so uh, I think it's quite funny because yeah, they get the hang of it very, very quickly without me um, explaining much. Mm -hmm. And I think they really like it, but, but also I think what I really think is um, good for the hospital is the reaction of parents. So like, um, after had a very young kid try the headsets and some parents were saying yeah he's never been that quiet in a very long time and so they were <laughs> much more pleased afterwards in the afternoon so that was great to see yeah i think they tend to pick it up quicker than adults often yeah yeah they do yeah and i liked what you were saying about like making a transformative experience as well that's something really interesting and you're going to be looking into that further 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I wish I, I'm very interested in the kind of uh, interpersonal or uh, how people can amaze one another through personal stories. That's the aspect I want to look at more. But yeah, I think I can't I can't put too much input myself in that. I, I need first to see what the children would like to to have in the experience. I think there's about three or four PhDs there in, in everything you've been talking about. It's so much, it's Probably, such a broad yeah. area. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks so much. That was brilliant. That was amazing.